Hello everybody, this is Ariane Arsenault. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Uh, we are in my workshop today, uh, La Fée de la Mer, Handmade Soaps, and I am very happy to present the second small soap mold of the small soap mold series that I'm uh, launching this uh, end of summer and fall. This mold is called the Interlock Soap Mold. It is by Lilu Soap Tools. Um, it is a very easy mold to assemble. It comes with a silicone uh, base and then the sides are stainless steel. Let me show you how to put it together. I've met my friend Li Ching um, a couple years ago during the Handcrafted Soap and Cosmetics Guild annual conferences. She was actually my roommate for the Atlanta conference and then she invited me to her home when the conference was in Dallas. And last time I saw her, she gave me this mold so that I could display it on my YouTube channel and it has been sitting on a shelf and today's the day. Leeching is very innovative. She has all of these great ideas in her mind. And so she had, uh, she designed this mold. I've never seen any other mold like this one before. It's quite unique. So here's how it goes. You have the, the dividers. They're all made of stainless steel. So this can all be put in the dishwasher. It's very easy to wash. So there are grooves in the silicone and you just place the dividers in position and then you lock them in place with the sides just like so oops then you push it down into the groove and you do the same on the other side and there you go you have a mold with four uh, cavities so this these will make actually four logs of soap and then you have the mylar lining pieces and you just take them and you place them along the side you don't need to grease them or anything they just kind of stick there uh, I guess there's a little bit of static maybe in the plastic of the mylar lining and they just stay in position Did I forget one? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nope, I have an extra. <laughs> when the sides are done, you also have some little miler lining that can be applied to the upper and lower sides of the mold. And they come in this little envelope and I keep it because these little things are so small that you just don't want to let, leave them laying around when they're dry and clean. You just put them back in the envelope. And there you go. And you are ready to make soap. While you can set up the soap mold just like this straight on the table, uh, if you do have anything else to do and you want to move it around, it is kind of a soft base because it's silicone. So I like to set it on a tray or on a piece of plywood. This is actually the cover for one of my other soap molds. So I like to set it on something kind of uh, a bit more sturdy so that when I'm done making the soap, if, if I wanna cover it, insulate it, and move it to the side, I can easily pick it up and bring it somewhere else. In my stock pot, I have five very simple ingredients. Uh, for this soap, it's gonna be a facial cleansing bar with bakuri butter. The bakuri butter is the darker one that you see right here. It's from Paris Fragrance USA. It is sustainably harvested in Brazil from the Amazon forest. And then I have some extra virgin coconut oil. It is fair trade. It is by Baraka Shea Butter. And there's shea butter in here that is also from Baraka Shea Butter and it is organic. I have some organic, fair trade and ethically produced palm oil by Palm and Wright. And then to this, once the butters and oils are melted, is gonna be added some extra virgin organic olive oil. I'm gonna get this to melt on low and we'll be back in a minute. Because this soap contains bakuri butter, of course, it will give a creamy brown color to the soap. But if you want to be able to enjoy the lovely skin benefits of bakuri butter, you kind of have to embrace the brown side of it. But it is great for dehydrated skin, very dry skin, sensitive skin. So it is a great butter to add to this type of soap. 
Uh, we do have a charcoal, activated charcoal soap, which I would recommend for normal to oily skin types, but this one is really aimed for people who have a delicate complexions and dry, dehydrated skins. It's a very, very lovely soap. I'm now ready to mix my lye water solution to the base oils and butters. I've already added the essential oils, so let's blend it up. And you will see the color changing from this almost black to creamy brown. It's the next day. The soap should be ready to remove from the mold. Voila. Let's test unmolding and uh, taking the mold apart. So we have some grip on the sides so we can start pushing this out. And perfect little soap loaves. Now the miler lining is still on the loaves, so I'm gonna go and put this in the sink. Uh, you could also dishwash uh, these dividers because they're stainless steel, so there's no problem. Let's see how the miler lining peels off. Oh, it's still a little sticky, so I didn't use sodium lactate in my batch. Maybe I should have, but I didn't. So it's not that big of a deal. I could wait a little bit longer. Let's do that. Let's wait a little bit because it's still a little sticky and you can see that some of the edges are very smooth and some of them have a little bit of the soap that uh, stuck on it. So I'll do this one just to have a comparison. But the bars are still warm to touch. So I figure if we wait just maybe an hour or two out of the mold, they will cool down, get firm, and removing the miler lining will be much easier. I also have my new soap cutter, the single wire soap cutter by Custom Craft Tools. And that's what I'm gonna use to cut these bars. What I did with my um, cutter is that I took a ruler that I placed on the one inch and I adjusted the guide and just 
tighten the knot and whenever I'll be cutting the rest of this, I just place my soap along the guide and we just cut it out like this. Lily Soap Tools does have a great um, soap cutter. It is all stainless steel. It is machine washable. You can wash it like you can soak the whole thing in water to clean, but I don't own that soap cutter. So that's why I'm using another one. But if you want to get all equipped with Lilu Soap Tools, she has an amazing soap cutter that is tailored to like fit the size of the logs of soap. All right, I am now going to release, ah, much better. So I let it cool down an extra hour and the mylar lining just releases much easier now and into the cutter. If you want to give your soaps a final, final touch, you can use a uh, beveler tool and smooth your corners. You don't absolutely have to do that, but if that's something you like, if it's a look that you like, it's also um, smoother to hold the soap in your hand when the edges are beveled like this. That's it. Now we're gonna have to wait for the next four weeks for these soaps to dry and cure. They will get super mild. They will be super moisturizing and nourishing, very gentle for your face. Um, I've already did a test batch of those a couple months ago and I've been using one for myself so I know what the end result will be. Uh, this is actually a soap recipe that I was teaching during the Handcrafted Soap and Cosmetics Guild um, online conference this spring. So. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you will consider looking at the interlock soap mold from Lilu Soap Tools. I will leave all of the links below through all of the equipment that I've used today so you guys can take a closer look at it. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section down below. You can subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and you can also subscribe to my Patreon campaign to support the ongoing uh, of my YouTube channel and uh, helping me make more great videos for you guys. Thank you. See you soon.